This is Ross DeCastanato interviewing Mike Parasa at the May 2019 Disney Animania convention. So now, did you have any favorite cartoons before you started animating? I, I sorry, I don't speak English too well. I, you say that again. I no, no, just kidding. <laughs> anyway, um, a favorite animated film? Yeah, favorite cartoons in general before you started. Favorite animating. cartoon in general. Well, the ones I didn't work on, it would be. It's just hard to start. But I'd say Snow White because it had so many groundbreaking elements in it. Uh, with the oh, you multiplying for a feature and first full-length feature animated film, but also Pinocchio. There's so much incredible detail. Uh, Sleep Beauty was such a beautiful, breathtaking film. The color, the scope, the you know the being done like in Cinerama like that, yeah. and then also Hundred One Dalmatians. Um, it was just such a, an incredible Madison Avenue type of thing brought to life on the big screen. And then there's other ones like Dumbo. I thought was fantastic because as a it's an incredible story, a lot of heart, a lot of feeling. The only female, the only uh, feature done by Disney under one year, and it was the first hit they'd had since Snow White. So it's. I'm sorry, I ramble on, but I, I, there's so many different Disney films that I've really loved. Very nice. Why would you say those were your favorites? Uh, for all those different reasons, I, I probably are. Another film I had to say that I really enjoyed uh, was Little Mermaid, and I was lucky to be the art director on that film. What was so much fun with that was I had I got to work with a lot of my old friends, people I'd gone to CalArts with and other friends I'd made at the studio. And then uh, when they approached me, I got a call from a guy named John Musker, who's a director, he and Ron Clemens. And he says, we're doing this film on Little Mermaid. We want you to be the art director. And I was working back over at Disney TV at that point doing DuckTales and uh, Goof Troop and stuff. And I said, well, uh, you know how the ending is. What are you going to do for the ending? And he goes, well, just, just read the script. I'll send you a script over. I said, uh, uh, John, I want to, because the ending in the film, or in the book, it basically has the mermaid committing suicide. Oh. She's her, She's got to put a knife into the prince's heart uh, by, this, by sundown, or if not, she'll turn, you know, she just disintegrates. And she ended up turning into foam on the water because she couldn't do it. She was in love with the prince too much. And I said, well... I hope you have a better ending than that. And he goes, just read the script. And the ending basically said, we, you know, good triumphs over evil, and they get married and all that kind of... But it wasn't... There were a lot of specifics, but he, he assured me it was going to be a happy ending. So I said, you know, and, he says, and also, we got a guy named Howard Ashman who's going to do the, the songs. And I went, oh, my God, I'm a big fan. He goes, yeah, right, like you, you've heard of Howard Ashman. And I said, yeah, I've got his album. I went to Westwood Playhouse, and he had Little Shop of Horrors. And I got, you know, Howard, who was at the uh, back door after the show... And he you know, had a record, and you know they was selling record albums. That's back when he had vinyl records, no CDs. And, and he actually signed it. He goes, "Oh, you do know who he is?" I said, "Yes, I do know who he is." So Howard had his uh, record, his uh, room right next to mine, where he and Alan were in there doing the songs, and it was, it was a lot of fun. So that was fun. Basil Bake Street was fun. My wife and I got a trip to uh, to London during that film. They called it Great Mouse Detective. So see, look in your eyes, going like, "What film was that?" But we called it Basil of Baker Street was the name that we, we actually worked on it, which we called it. So my wife and I ended up going to uh, London for about two weeks doing research for the film. We went up inside Big Ben, which wasn't allowed to the public. It was like they would sit there and allow, they would, we had to get the resident engineer of the House of Parliament in London to okay our visit. And then we got that and realized we had to be we had to dress up like in a suit. You had to be in a, a formal dress and all. Because Big Ben, even though it's, you know, it's a big tower, the clock tower, is considered part of Westminster Palace. And so in order to be in the palace, you've got to dress accordingly. So uh, so that was a lot of fun working on that one. So it's it's hard to pick out any one. It's like picking out your, your favorite child, you know. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, and so what was the first project that you worked on? Uh, first project that I worked on was actually a film that was never released. Uh, called The Little Broomstick. And it was at the same time, we, we just finished up Rescuers. We had started a film called Fox and the Hound, which I did a lot of work on. But the film called Little Broomstick and another one called Catfish Ben were my two earlier projects I worked on uh, with Ken Anderson and another one was with Wooly Reiterman. Those films never actually put into production and were never released. But they, I, I enjoyed both. Catfish Ben was... Uh, kind of like, for me anyway, like a Song of the South kind of a story. Oh. It took place in the Deep South, and it was all these little animals kind of getting together, critters, to survive, you know, this uh, big, big uh, thing was going to happen to their area. And then the other one, Broomstick, Little Broomstick, was actually about a little girl who was having the worst summer she could ever think of, and her, her parents weren't quite getting along. She was shipped off, and she was enrolled into a witchcraft academy. It was a school of wizards and witchcrafts, and she didn't realize she actually had 
you know, powers of witch. And so this is years and years and years before another famous, you know, school of witchcraft came on the scene. But uh, we were working on that, and uh, the head of the studio said, okay, this is going to be very expensive. It would have been, because we had a crowd of kids, we had a lot of people in it. I said, if we're going to do this, we need to make a decision. We either have to do Little Broomstick, or we have to do Black Cauldron, because they're both going to be pretty much epic movies and expensive. And so we said, well, uh, we could do, I guess, well, I, I voted for Little Broomstick. And so did some of the other you know, veterans that I knew there. So we said, we want to do Broomstick. Well, Cauldron was already being advertised as like the, the Snow White for the new generation, and all the money's going. And so, it, and it was it was still an interesting, good choice. And I, I understand why they did it, but Cauldron's the one that got the green light, and the other film just kind of got kind of swept under the rug. Well, what was it like to work on those? Um, it was a lot of fun. In those days, we still had. I had a corner room, and the other side was a guy named Don Griffith. Don Griffith's one of the most talented unsung heroes of Disney animation. He has done stuff for every animated field from uh, Pinocchio all the way up to uh, Black Cauldron. That's a pretty long run of classic films. He got there right for Snow White. And we had in the other corner office, where it was like, I was in a the corner, and then we had the, uh, the director of our animated features and producer was Wooly Reiterman. And so we had all the, uh, Eric Larson, we had still some of the nine old men were still there at that time. Milk Call was still there, Frank and Ollie, a lot of the guys were still, now Ward was working over at Wed, but you had people that were still, you know, in the building. And the building itself, had, it was like a time warp, it hadn't really changed much since Walt had passed away. So it was it was a lot of fun, we saw the same exhibits, we had the old sword and stone, uh, flip books and, and stuff in the hallway downstairs from National Geographic interview days. So that went back to before Walt had passed away, it was still in the, in the hallway. And, and why why were the films not released? Well, they're very expensive, and so you only you've got to green light something that's going to be uh, marketable, you know, to the masses. And so Cauldron was was green. You can't just sit there and do too many uh, starts on an animated film because they they go for you know millions and millions of dollars, and it's, it's a lot of manpower. So you never know one day they may end up uh, releasing because like Little Mermaid was actually worked on back in the uh, like in the late 30s or something Kai Nielsen and some of the other illustrators had worked on a version of Little Mermaid and that was never as part of a, a package film at one point with uh, with uh, Hans Christian Andersen it was going to be a film on Hans Christian Andersen that Disney was doing well that didn't make it and then look at it decades go by and then oh they're making it in fact they pulled out a lot of Hans Christian Andersen's sketches became a lot of the blueprint for the storyline the whole thing with the ship at the beginning Eric on the ship, the fireworks, all that kind of stuff. Those are taken directly from the old Kai Nielsen storyboards. Very nice. And out of all the projects that you've worked on, which one is your favorite? Um, I think I answered that one. <laughs> Probably Little Mermaid, I think. Um, hard to say. Probably... Probably the Little Mermaid. Very nice. Why would you say it's your favorite? Because uh, the people that you work with, because of Howard, Alan, John, Ron, all the animators on there, uh, people like Glenn, Mark, it was just, it was a team of people. It's like Walt used to say, it, it always takes people to do these things. And that's, when you work on a film like that, we had a, an incredible team of talented, really nice folks. So that was, uh, I think, my best memories of that one. Yeah. Very nice. Well, thank you for allowing me to interview you. Well, thank you very much. Very nice to meet you. Thanks. You take nice care of yourself. You thank you. Well, there you have it. That was Rostro Castanaro interviewing Mike Peraza at the May 2019 Disney Animania Convention.